Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel of Luke. Today we're at Luke of chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. And let's, uh, we're part way into this parable, the rich man and Lazarus. We talked about yesterday morning that this is a parable. It's not a, it's not teaching about a forever burning place of hell. That's another question really. But in here, this is certainly not teaching it. This is a parable. Well, you talked about why that is, but let's read this portion for today. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Okay, so we're part way into this parable. We saw why it's a parable yesterday morning. And here's a few more reasons as we look at this. Remember that um, you have these three characters, right? You have the rich man, you have Lazarus, and you have Abraham. Now, Abraham's deceased, he's dead, he's going to be resurrected. Uh, but in this figure, uh, the poor guy, Lazarus, he's taken into Abraham's bosom, wherever that is. And we talked about that yesterday morning, too. So there's a big reversal, and the rich guy now is being tormented in the heat. So here's what we have is he has a proposal. He says, hey, Father Abraham, and he's, he's talking directly or praying directly to Father Abraham in the parable. That's, that's pretty weird. You don't pray to a dead person. But he says, um, send Lazarus so that he can dip the, the tip of his finger. He's going to dip his tip of his finger into a little, a little bit of water and drop a little drop of water. And that's going to give relief to the rich man who's, who's tormented in, in, in a birth place of forever burning. That's, that's stretchy. And again, when we have parables, we don't try to make every single thing line up. We, we don't try to uh, make, obviously, this is highly symbolic. And so we're going to treat it that way. We're not going to uh, make everything try to stand up because there's always one main point. We're going to get to that tomorrow morning. But we can't mix the spiritual and the material. That's this whole chapter 16. And it's got these two rather unusual parables in it. The one about the crooked manager and this one about the rich man and Lazarus. So in the parable here, Abraham explains to the rich man why this you can't do this. There can't be any communication between us. But if it were true, and you made all the pieces stand up, you say, yeah, we can, we're heaven and hell are right next to each other. You can see across the way into the other. But that's not the way it is. That's not what the Bible teaches at all. So he says, no, that's not going to work. We're not going to do that. And tomorrow morning, there will be a proposal by the rich man, a secondary proposal, since Abraham is not going to allow this. So what do we find out today? Uh, the, we've got to let the parable be rightly interpreted, and then we'll understand it better. But again, this all kind of boils down to what? To, again, the same thing we find in this chapter. You cannot serve God and mammon. And this rich guy has served himself. He lived uh, with all the, all the goodies he could get. And now there's a reversal. And the, one of the, the real point here we're going to come to is, you know, individually we must serve God and we must serve him now. We cannot uh, kind of slide in at the last moment, suddenly change everything. Today's the day. Today's the day to get right with God. It's very serious. And the rich man just kind of uh, diddle diddle diddled along and wound up in lots of trouble. And so that's a piece. But we'll carry on, and it'll be make a lot more sense tomorrow morning as we come to the end. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to rightly understand your word. Uh, we want to just only let the scriptures speak, even if they speak of something that's uncomfortable to us, something that doesn't match what we've understood before, not sustaining ideas that maybe Hollywood has pumped into our mind, or maybe even godly men and women have believed before us. So again, we look here and we find out that uh, the, this man wants some relief, but he's not going to get the relief. And the reversal is there. And Lazarus, who was treated poorly, is being treated well. So it's very interesting. There will be a final working out of justice in the end. You are going to be fair. And the things that we missed in this life that you want us to have, that we'll see some of those in the, in the near future in, in the kingdom. And we need to be right and get right with you today. Oh, thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and helping us understand your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's be careful with the word. And remember that the real... At the end of the parable, usually is where the lesson is, and we'll find it in verse 30 and 31 as we finish out tomorrow morning with the rest of this parable. So take a look at that, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you today.